टुडे इज द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द न्यू इयर द फर्स्ट पूर्णिमा ऑफ द न्यू इयर टुडे इज ऑल्सो द डे वेन गुरुदेव स्वामी सत्यानंद जी बाय द डेट ऑफ कोर्स स्वामी जी अटेंड महासमाधि इन डिसेंबर सिक्स एंड सिंस दैट टाइम एवरी मंथ फिफ्थ एंड सिक्स इज सेलिब्रेटेड एज गुरु भक्ति योगा डे एंड देर फोर आई फील इट इज अ वेरी नाइस एंड यूनिक टी एंड को इंसिडेंस दैट our first in conversation topic of this year is being held on the first purnima of the year and also on the day dedicated to swami ji because this program this year long program series of activities is dedicated to the memory of shri swami ji paramhansa स्वामी सत्यानंद सरस्वती एंड दिस इयर इज हिज बर्थ सेंटेनरी स्वामी जी वॉज बॉर्न इन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी थ्री एग्जैक्टली वन हंड्रेड इयर्स एगो एंड वी हैव डिसाइडेड टू अंडरटेक मल्टीपल एक्टिविटीज बाय विच we can dedicate ourselves to the teachings of swami ji and all by which we can make a change in our life spoke of yoga never the no doubt but we need to know that swami ji did not speak of yoga as the ultimate goal for swami ji yoga was always a means to an end so what was the means and what was the end yoga became the means so then what was the end the end was living the life to the optimum i am capable of certain activities but if i don't live up to those potentials then i have not lived the life to the optimum and all swami ji's activities if you observe all throughout have been to reach out to people and provide them the information and the knowledge that there is a great power residing within me it is just necessary that i need to activate myself in the same manner that a mobile phone whose sim card has not been activated will not function to its optimum capacity a mobile phone whose sim card has been activated with only 2g network it can work at sub optimal zone speeds 3g slightly better 4g a little bit more better but when it comes to 5g then it is as far as we know the best so it is this that we need to do and this is what swami ji taught us in multiple different ways and today's topic is dedicated to gurudev and his teachings and this is the beginning of an year long series every first friday i will be discussing one topic because for every month i have chosen a theme based on the teachings of swami ji and how we can implement that in our lives so based on that theme i will be speaking on a topic on the first friday and 
during the entire month we will be practicing various yogic practices so that we can increase that theme in our life and that will happen in the morning with the mantra booster and yoga booster sessions and then at the end of the month on the fourth weekend saturday sunday we will be having a special satyam yoga conclave during the entire month we have lived we have introspected we have thought about we have tried to experience some aspects of yoga in our lives and on the fourth weekend we will be having a detailed discussion on the different aspects of that subject so that we can have a comparative analysis of the modern and of the yogic perspective by which we can make definitive changes in our lives this is the aim and objective of this series of this satyam yog satyam shatavdi yog yag so with this short introduction let us begin today's session we shall chant the mantra om three times and we shall chant a short prayer to guru because guru is the dispeller of darkness and in today's times we are all in lot of darkness on a physical level the mental level emotional level and thanks to the covid pandemic it just seems to be aggravating so what is the way out guru is the dispeller of darkness and guru is a tatva a principle which exists through a person so let us begin by our pranams at tributes to gurudev please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in dhyan or chin mudra head neck shoulders back in a straight line eyes and mouth gently closed bring your awareness to your eyebrow center bhru madhya and at the bhru madhya visualize the form of a jyoti jyoti is the symbol of knowledge of light the representative of the guru tatva feel the radiance of the jyoti covering you enveloping you and maintaining this awareness of this experience we shall chant the mantra om followed by a short mantra dedicated to guru taking in a deep breath oh oh गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देवो महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुर नम ध्यान मूलम गुरोर्मूर्ति 
पूजा मूल गुरोपद मूल गुरोक्यम मोक्ष मूल गुरो कृपा ओ शांति 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 हरि ओ हरिओं सत् नमो नारायण जय हो द टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज एनरिच्ड लिविंग द चैलेंजेस एंड अपॉर्चुनिटीज बट व्हाट इज एनरिच्ड लिविंग वी ऑल लिव एंड वी लिव लाइफ टू द बेस्ट ऑफ आवर एबिलिटीज nobody can say that i am not living and there might be some people who might be rich and who might not be rich it's possible that those people who are not rich might say that i am not living an enriched life but those people who are rich cannot say i am not living an enriched life but is that the richness that we are looking at no you see there is a concept in nuclear physics and you have something known as the radioactive materials uranium is the most well known and in this uranium if you want to make use of this radioactivity you just can't take uranium and start making use of this radioactive energy you need to process this uranium so that uranium can be utilized and that energy can be tapped into that energy can be tapped into and the process of upgrading uranium so that we can tap into that energy is known as uranium enrichment and when the uranium is thus processed then it is known as enriched uranium uranium was uranium all the time but from uranium 235 it was made into uranium 238 and then it became enriched uranium and this enriched uranium can be utilized for multiple purposes and the ability of this uranium the energy which can be then tapped into and utilized is far more than any energy we have ever thought of the easiest thought about this energy is of course always the destructive and we have seen the horrors of that but efforts and lot of hard work has shown that this energy can be utilized for many useful things the atom for peace a very famous slogan we can make use of this atomic energy for multiple peaceful and constructive activities so it is this enriching that we are looking at the question then comes we are ourselves how can we enrich ourselves and what is the dimension of enrichment that we are looking into is it enriching ourselves by knowledge you learn different subjects and you enrich yourself in the knowledge of physics chemistry biology mathematics economics and most of other subjects yes that is one type of enrichment but that is not again the enrichment we are talking about to be able to understand the concept of enrichment we need to first understand who we are and yoga speaks of us as multi dimensional objects that we live and exist in five dimensions 
and there is another dimension beyond these five dimensions which is the essence of our being that's what yoga says in fact that's what most of the indian scriptures say that these five dimensions they work upon they are worked upon by different principles and when we are able to upgrade the activities over there then our abilities start increasing just as when it is dark all over our eyes cannot perceive much and we are groping in the darkness and in such a time if we have to walk ahead then we will not be able to cover much ground for that if we want to cover more ground we need a torch when we have got a flashlight then the path is clear but if there is a fog even that flashlight is not sufficient then you need a fog light so that it can pierce through the fog and go ahead in the same manner we need something by which we can illumine our path and then we can come to know who we are am i this body yes i am this body no doubt but am i only this body no body is one part of me mind is another part of me emotions is a third part of me my energetic systems metabolisms is a fourth part of me my intuitive systems is another part of me these are parts which we are able to perceive as our perception increases we become more and more aware by naked eye we can see that light begins at violet v i b g y o r seven colors but when we increase the ability of the eyes sense of perception you have ultraviolet and infrared light exists beyond that i can perceive only so much sound exists beyond 20 hertz and 20000 hertz my ears can hear only so much does not mean sound does not exist beyond that in the same way our existence extends beyond what we can perceive the ability to be able to tap into these hidden layers of our personality is the concept of enrichment which yoga speaks about and mm. how do we do that swami ji gave a very nice example he said that if we need to work in the world and we need to do just the mundane activities go to office come back uh, go to the shop come back do the home activities just that much then the energy circuit which is available to us is sufficient but if we want to do something extraordinary become a genius become a divine person divine not in the sense of being a holy person but divine in the sense of having abilities which are more than what is generally seen then we need to tap into this higher energy circuit which is present in each and every one of us when we activate this higher energy system within us we activate a different circuit and when the different circuit gets activated the same brain functions in a different manner the same object which appears to be an obstacle to appears which is a challenge a problem a road block something against which ahead and 
then i fail and or give up now suddenly there is a new perception which comes new is new abilities come up that circuit needs to be activated just recently somebody showed me a clip of the recent football and in this recent football match the hero of this world cup messi he was shown to be standing somewhere midfield at near that midfield line and he receives the ball and in less than 10 seconds or maybe less he goes across the entire half field dodges five people fools them and scores a goal and they were saying that everybody was like dumb struck here he was strolling at a point and suddenly he how did he do that put any other footballer or put you and i ha huh, we won't be able to do anything how did he do that a good footballer will be able to reach that level but a brilliant footballer a genius is what is needed to convert that situation where there are five different people into an opportunity and it is this that are looking at swami ji said that there is a higher energy within each and every one of us and that energy is known as the kundalini shakti and it is this kundalini shakti which has to be awakened please do not think that awakening kundalini will mean we will have all those fantastic visions no that is not what awakening kundalini is awakening kundalini means awakening those aspects of our personality which till now are hidden for an ordinary footballer this was something which was impossible but for a genius he found a way out this is possible because of the ascent of this higher energy and as this energy starts ascending many abilities start coming up i'll give you another example there was a great musician and he was sitting with his uh, team doing riyaz now while they were doing riyaz and they had gone deep into the practice maybe an hour or a half hour and suddenly a cat came by it stumbled rolled and went away and something struck the musician and suddenly he composed a piece describing that how did that happen all of us see cats moving around but we are not struck with that inspiration to connect that happens because the musician was able to connect to this higher energy and direct it in this direction this is what we mean by tapping into our latent energy and becoming an upgraded model of ourselves when we become an upgraded model of ourselves those abilities those qualities allow us to find solutions where none existed find opportunities where only road blocks and challenges existed that is the secret of enriched living when we live an enriched life it does not mean that all the problems fade away 
and we live in utopia. Oh, everything is nice and sweet and beautiful and happy and we are in the, an opium haze of happiness. No, it is not an opium haze. Life is full of challenges. But along with that, you have the choice to make that challenge into an opportunity and grow exponentially from there. The ability to do that is the gift of yoga. And it is this gift which Gurudev Swami Satyananda gave to us. Yoga did exist for centuries. But when Gurudev was given the mandate by his Guru, Swami Shivananji, then he looked at the situations. He travelled the length and breadth of the Indian subcontinent and interacted and pondered, why did my Guru ask me to teach yoga? If my Guru has asked me to do something, there has to be a reason. What is that reason? And as he mingled with the masses, he came to know one thing. Some people were happy, some people were sad, but almost all were miserable. They will be happy for some time, but will descend into sor sorrow. They will move from sorrow to happiness, but all the time they were miserable for one thing or the other. The person who is rich is miserable because somebody might steal his richness. The person is poor, he is miserable because he doesn't have anything. The person who is a king, he is miserable because there are so many people who are trying to avoid taxes. There, was, there is misery all over. And Swamiji said that the cause of all this unhappiness is one. The fickleness of the mind. The untrained nature of the mind. The mind is a very powerful force. But mind is a very good servant, assistant, but a very bad master. Because this mind is untrained. It does not know how to direct. And it will direct us haywire. If you have any doubt, just pick up any newspaper or any news channel and go through. And you will see horrifying examples of insensitivity of people. Why? Because they themselves are in the clutches of the whims of their minds. And their minds are untrained. They are raw. So it jumps from one end to the other. And at the end, it destroys the life of the person. This is the cause of all misery, all sadness, all problems. So, he discovered that that is the reason why his guru asked him to teach yoga. And Swamiji said very early on that we need to bring about a change in our lives. Are, paisa nahi hai? Log to paani bech karke karodpati ban jate hai, he said in one satsang. And that was the time when bottled water, mineral water was just coming up. Today, we, you know, all, it has become an uh, essential part of our lives. But those many years ago when Swamiji spoke about this, water was free, freely available. Bottling water was just a new concept. And Somebody who had done that had become a millionaire. And he, therefore he said, it is not that we need to help people by just giving them dole or goods or material. No, that might help them in the short term. But we need to help people trigger something within people so that this journey which was stunted, which has been stopped, which has gone dormant, begins and 
slowly, step by step, step by step, step by step, we are able to enrich ourselves. And by enriching ourselves, slowly, like when the dawn breaks, everything which is dark starts appearing. Oh, there is a road here. There is a road there. Oh, there is a small, I, if I jump three steps here and then go to the left, suddenly many things which were impossible in dark starts becoming possible. In the same way, when that light dawns upon us, problems in our lives start becoming solutions. And for this, we need to practice yoga. But what is this yoga that Swamiji spoke about? The yoga which Swamiji spoke about is not just asan pranayam. If we just practice asan pranayam, yes, there will be a difference. But that is only the first step. It is just like saying that inorganic chemistry is the entire science. Science in itself is so vast. Forget science, even chemistry is so vast. And if you say that only inorganic chemistry is the entire length and breadth of science, we are limiting the definition. In the same way, when we speak only of asan pranayam as yoga, then we are limiting the definition of yoga. Swami Shivananji spoke of yoga as the harmony between the head, the heart and the hands. The head, the intellect, the heart, the emotions, the hands, the actions. Manasa, vacha, karmana. And when there is harmony in these three different aspects of our life, then our life becomes different. We have five different musicians sitting, each playing his own instrument or her no instrument. And if all five start playing together, what will happen? What will happen? Aapko kya lagta hai? If five musicians start playing together, what will happen? Anybody? All the musics will mix up, Swamiji, and we can't hear the particular one. Mm -hmm. And the different sound will come. So, it will become unbearable to hear, right? Right, Swamiji. And if I'm listening to one musician, it feels nice. But if I listen to these five, I would rather run away. But if there is a conductor who is in the center and as you would see, they wave their hands and then with one wave, one person starts playing an instrument, then comes down. The other plays, the third plays, the fourth plays, fifth plays. Then what happens? Suddenly you, from cacophony, you have got symphony, an orchestra, divine music starts coming and it affects all of us in a very nice manner. This is what we need to do. Our head thinks in one way. Our heart thinks in another way. Our hands, they do in a different way. What is going to happen? Three different musics playing together and each competing to be louder than the other destroys quality of life. But if these three are brought together in a specific manner, then there is symphony. There is divine music which comes. This is possible through yoga. And this in fact is yoga. To do that, there are multiple ways. There is not just one way. Asan pranayam is one way. But then there are other ways too. And this way is the beginning of yoga by which we can slowly start connecting to that higher energy within us. And by doing so, 
we make a change in our life. I remember a saying of a Zen master. Before learning Zen, mountains were mountains, rivers were rivers, valleys were valleys, and wind was wind. But it was all far away for me. While learning Zen, Mountains were not mountains, rivers were not rivers, Mount, uh, valleys were not valleys and wind was not wind. And I was still grappling with them. And once I mastered Zen, mountains were mountains, rivers were rivers, valleys were valleys, wind was wind. But I was one with them. This I was one with them is the process. What is Zen? Zen is a modification of the word Dhyan. Dhyan is one of the steps of yoga, wherein the consciousness within us rises and starts fusing with something which is out there. And a higher reality starts coming up. This is not only possible for everybody, but this is the birthright of every human being. In fact, Swamiji said that this is the purpose of life. To discover that higher self within us. And to give expression to that. A musician will give a different exp expression. A family homemaker will give a different expression. The children of such enlightened person will be already, they will have a head start. A doctor will give different expressions. And then life of an individual, life of a society and life of the civilization changes. Yoga is that catalyst which can make this change happen. And that is the reason why Gurudev, so many years ago, when he started his work in yoga, declared yoga is that force. Yoga will emerge as a powerful world culture which will change the course of world events. 50, 60 years ago, people would have thought it is perhaps the fantasy of a person. But today, we see how popular yoga has become. How people are thronging to yoga. Why? Because yoga addresses this root cause. The agitation of the mind. The untrained nature of the mind. The fickleness of the mind and yoga provides us a way how we can tame, harness and utilize the abilities of the mind. This is what yoga means to us to be able to enrich our lives. And how do we begin? We can begin with asan pranayam. We can begin with different practices. But we can also, in today's times, when our emotions are so out of context, we can begin with practices by which we can also contain these emotions. We can give them a good direction. And towards this effect, Gurudev's Guru, Swami Shivananji Maharaj, gave a different take on the eightfold path of yoga. He said, serve, love, give, purify, meditate, realize, be good, do good, be kind, be compassionate. That is the eightfold path of yoga. And his path of yoga did not start with purifying and realization. 
it started with serve reach out to others why not because they are poor and you are rich and so you are out of uh, uh, a sense of uh, whatever you are wanting to help them out no you are doing that because you are reaching out so that you can go deeper and deeper within reach out to connect within that is the reason how do you begin you begin with serve love give purify when you do serve love give purification happens automatically and when purification takes place then meditation happens automatically realization as dawns but after realization don't stay in that state of realization swami shivanand ji says come back be good the expression the expression of that realization should be seen in your external world you have to be good you have to do good you don't have to look good and appear good you have to be good and do good and you have to be kind and be compassionate not condescending but compassionate when you do that then this enrichment begins and when this enrichment begins then there is a different dimension we are in kali yuga when such enrichment begins then we go into satya yuga there is a question which has come and i really like this question imagine everyone in the world is enriched would the nature be able to sustain those many enriched people would it be possible to protect nature if humans start utilizing their potential you see when we are speaking of enrichment we are speaking meant of speaking of enrichment within and when we are enriched within then we automatically become more empathetic today we are trying our level best to inform people please reduce the carbon imprint because the nature is suffering and nobody pays a hoot why because they feel it makes no difference to them it is not they who are suffering but to an enriched individual anything going wrong in nature is i am hurting myself vasudhaiva kutumbakam vasudha eva the entire creation is my family we are all related and when we are such people then we will not even dream of hurting nature we will rather dream and live in harmony and in symphony with nature will my hand ever try and hurt my leg no because my hand and my leg both live under the regulation of the brain so they can't fight with each other but we as a hand have gone out of sync with nature because we think we are individuals we don't exist in alignment with nature and then nature gives us a slap she releases a tsunami somewhere or a small virus which we can't even see and that one small tiny virus has the ability to bring the entire civilization to its knees never ever have you seen all the planes stopping all the factories stopping all the streets empty how did that happen just with one small virus why because we are out of sync with nature enrichment means get back in sync with nature in nature you have a concept called ecology and in an ecology there is an ecosystem and in this ecosystem you have the elephant who also exists you have the tiger who also exists you have the birds you have the fish you have the trees you have everything which exists the tiger will not kill unnecessarily 
the elephant will not go on a rampage unnecessarily just because it, it has the strength. No. When we are enriched, then it is an example of ecology remaining in harmony with itself. Only when the ecological components of that ecosystem go out of sync and haywire, then there is a problem. So, if all of us become enriched, then earth will not remain earth. It will become heaven. It will become swarga. Swarga is a place where there is complete harmony and earth will be transformed into paradise. But, of course, it will never happen. All what we can do is we can try to increase the number of enriched people in the world. Everybody being enriched is like having daylight all the time. Doesn't work. The world is made up of three gunas. Sattva, Rajas, Tamas. And there is a fixed proportion of each. Tamas is more than 50-60%. Rajas is 40-45-49%. Together they make 99%. And Sattva is just 1%. But when this 1% starts coming down 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, then there is a problem. And when Sattva starts increasing 1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1 1.6, then suddenly it is Satya Yuga where everything is in harmony. So, this is what we have to try to do. Everybody will not be enriched. That's not possible because that is not the rule of nature. But even if we can be 1%, 1.1%, 2% in the world will be a different place. This is what we need to work towards. And how? By beginning with practicing yoga, but sooner or later we have to move to living the principles of yoga, the principle of harmony, the principle of balance, the principle of optimization. And then that energy which is there latent within starts coming up and the problems start melting away. Not because the problems are going away, but because we are finding solutions to those problems. We are finding a method to convert that problem into an opportunity. That is the aim of yoga. And let this be our sankalpa as we begin the year to try and understand these principles of yoga and bit by bit imbibe them in our lives so that our lives start getting enriched. Swamiji always used to say, the real life is within. The real life is not outside. But it is true. It is always true. Just that we don't realize it. When I eat something and I enjoy it, I feel that it is that substance outside which is actually giving me joy or pleasure. But is it that way? No. It is a chemical reaction in the brain which is giving me that pleasure. And that chemical reaction causes a change which makes me perceive that, aha, this is something which is pleasuresome or that is something which is painful. And when I close my eyes and I make that change within, same thing happens. This is the same thing which happens to people when they have hallucinations. But when they have hallucinations, they are not aware of a higher dimension of our existence. With yoga, you can attain that dimension of existence. That is the aim of yoga. And to do that, we need to progress step by step, systematically. 
slowly, then there is a change in our lives. So, this is the concept of yoga which Swamiji brought about. He brought it to the world. He presented the same old ancient knowledge but in a manner which we modern people can understand, comprehend and implement in today's times. And that is how one can enrich ourselves. Uranium-235 to Uranium-238. Exploding that atom within. So this is how we should try and make a change in our life. Aryom, that's it. If anybody has any questions, we can spend a few minutes discussing any points or answering the questions. Otherwise, then we can conclude. If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask the question or put the question in the chat box. Namo Narayan Swamiji. Namo Narayan. Uh, thank you for answering that question. And you know, because you answered, I have another question Beautiful. <laughs> associated to that. Um, so I'm thinking uh, maybe the definition of enrichment is what has, you know, it has to be rewritten or it has to be redefined. The word enrichment itself has to be redefined uh, world over. Earlier, uh, People used to say that prosperity is having three square meals a day. And today they are saying three square meals will make you round. So, you know, uh, the whole idea of poverty is now again redefined. Earlier, what used to be thought of poverty is today um, sattvic lifestyle. No, I disagree. Just merely... A absence of external positions does not make a sattvic lifestyle. A sattvic lifestyle is because of the change inside. A beggar and a sannyasi both don't have any positions. But a beggar is not a sannyasi and a sannyasi is not a beggar. A sannyasi is a shahen shaha. He is a swami. He is a master because he has mastered the mind. So the difference is in, in the mindset, isn't yes. it? It's in the way you look at things. Yes. So, and and people will be like, they will be at awe with the sannyasi and they will be very sad about the beggar. Uh, but only a shift in their uh, mindset may probably make it much better, you know, instead of giving them possessions. But then today's world looks at looks at poverty in in a different different way right uh, even you know whether you law, you talk about artists to policy makers uh, the only way people want to eradicate poverty is by giving things to them yeah that is true so it's, i think the definition of enrichment ago, has to be popularized I, I think it is already happening. It is already happening. There are so many thinkers, so many people who are already thinking. It is just that it is still not exploding in the popular uh, mindset as of now. Because, you see, uh, the path of yoga is not the path of sloganeering. The path of yoga is a silent path. And silently, without dramatics, everything will change. Just see in the last 50, 60 years, were there big revolutions saying that, oh, yoga is the way, we should do this, we should do that. No, quietly, without anything, there's such a dramatic change world over. 50 years ago, yoga was looked as something which is a religious activity, limited to people who should be in mountains. Today, people realize that, oh, no, yoga is for me. Because it makes a difference in my life. This happens slowly, steadily, person to person. It doesn't ever happen top down. It goes bottoms to top. 
and as far as what you mentioned changing the definition of enrichment i would say enrichment always means the same people perceive it differently because they don't want to look at it differently and for this i will only say what galileo had said when he was forced to accept that the sun revolves around the earth he was forced to say that the earth uh, sorry the sun revolves around the earth and the earth is stationary so he said that and then he put his head down and gently muttered still it revolves the truth cannot be changed the earth revolves around the sun and that is the truth enrichment is enrichment it cannot be understood differently our perception has to change the word enrichment it is something like please forgive me for not being politically correct but because nowadays i have heard it is not politically correct to say that a person is blind he is now visually challenged person does not matter if i put in the same disgust i put in the same discrimination i put in the same uh, neglect to the person but now i am calling it visually challenged what difference does it make you call him visually challenged you call him blind you call him surdas it's the same thing but how you behave with him or her is important things which are there within us that is important and that is changing slowly step by step bit by bit the change is coming to you don't agree chitra ha no i i totally agree swami ji thank you so much um yeah only thing is to popularize maybe you know i am thinking of larger scale people uh, who are at the understand understanding level is challenged for them whether they are educated or not um you know this i uh, i keep seeing people who think that accumulating positions is enrichment so that is the reason why i asked that question and but this, yeah but as you is, said the change this, may come this is, this is this is also a process of evolution this is also a process of evolution those people who are uh, in the pos- uh, places where uh, they can take policy decisions as you are saying they are our representatives and the popular uh, mindset at this point of might be that but a change has to take place and that has to happen slowly a child cannot suddenly become an adult if a child suddenly becomes an adult it's too problematic the individual can't handle so there is a gradual evolution which takes place in the same way this attitudes gradually change and they say the darkest hour is before dawn and then suddenly the dawn breaks through and i think we are at that point of time where the dawn is breaking through it is still appearing dark to some people at some places i agree fully very dark in fact it is much darker than before apparently but no for sure that this is just the precursor of dawn which is coming which is on way and it is just about to burst open on the public consciousness soon so with this let us conclude today's session and uh, we will discuss more about this the applications about this how can we enrich ourselves and by enriching ourselves what are the different dimensions of our lives how we as children and young adults can enrich our lives and make a difference in our life how we as adults can make a change in our lives and enrich our lives how we as senior citizens can make a change in our lives 
hand. All of three of us together, how can we make a change in our society, our civilization? Is something we will discuss in the Satyam Yoga Conclave taking place on the fourth, the uh, fourth week, fifth weekend this time. I think it is 29th and 30th of January. The dates will be shared soon and we will be having four different sessions, each detailing and discussing all this, which we have just, you know, um, a thought process which I have triggered. And I hope during this period in between, you get an opportunity to think about what are the possibilities? What are the difficulties? Because this is what we are going to discuss at that Satyam, the first Satyam Yoga Conclave of this year. So, remain tuned to the different activities happening. We will be ha having many informations and activities because we believe that this is the year of the breakthrough. The year when, as you very rightly pointed out, it is all dark still. But that first glimmer of hope which shows the way out is coming up. And how can I bring that ray of light in my life and bring that breakthrough in my life? This is the year when the Divine constellations, divine configurations are such that we can make that breakthrough in our lives most easily. So, wishing all of you the best to make most of this auspicious year. Let us conclude today and we will meet soon in another two weeks time to discuss about the yogic perspectives of Indian fasts and festivals. Are they really religious or is there a strong component of yoga, of life sciences, of Ayurveda, of health, of harmony in them? And if so, how can we implement those principles in our life? That is what we will see two weeks from now. And three weeks from now, we will have, and in the meanwhile, we will have multiple other activities. You can remain tuned to that. With this, let us conclude. Please close your eyes. Awareness at the eyebrow center. Bring back the experience you had chosen in the beginning of the session. And maintaining your awareness on this, let us chant the mantra Om three times, followed by Shanti Pa. Taking in a deep breath. Oh. Oh. Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityor ma mrutam gamaya, sarvesham swasti bhavatu, sarvesham shantir bhavatu, sarvesham purnam bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushtivardhanam 
ಉರ್ವಾರುಕಮಿವ ಬಂಧನ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮುಕ್ಷೀಯಮೃತ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಮುದ್ರ ತ್ವೇವ ಮಾತಾ ಚಿತ್ವೇವ ಬಂಧುಶ್ಚ ಸಖಾತ್ವೇವ ವಿದ್ಯಾವ ಸರ್ವ ಮಮ ದೇವ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವ ಮಮ ದೇವ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವ ಮಮ ದೇವ ದೇವ ಹರಿ Are you? That's Sat, gently rub your eyes, uh, rub your palms against each other. Place them on your closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes, to the brain, the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Are you? That's Sat. Namo Narayan. Namo Narayan.